Hey folks, welcome back to The Bike Bit. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can add additional uh, shortcuts or launchers to the right-click context menu. Now, uh, this came about as uh, 18.04 from Ubuntu, the long-term support release of the operating system got pushed out. And uh, I started looking around to see what it would be like to test. In fact, the uh, distro I'm running right now is Linux Mint. I'm usually a fan of Mint and have been using it for a while. So I decided to download the, the latest release, which is Linux Mint 19. And uh, this is actually the Cinnamon desktop environment. That's the choice that I made. And I've been using it for a couple of months now, and I actually find it to be really, really uh, well built, well designed. It's it's really a clean iteration of the the distro, and I think it's well worth checking out if if you haven't already done so at some point. Now, the thing that I came across when I first started playing around with this, especially. Uh, looking to see how I can kind of reconfigure the server to work best for me or reconfigure the operating system to work best for me. I realize that there are times when I, I rely on the right click uh, context menu quite a bit. But, uh, you know, when you take a look at it, you can see that there is an option here to create a new launcher. However, that's if you click on it and enter in the information and details, it actually will drop a .desktop link to your desktop. So it's not really actually right adding in an additional entry in here. And uh, in the past, before 1804, again, I should preface by saying that um, Linux Mint is a, uh, it, it actually derives from Ubuntu. So before Ubuntu 1804, you could use an application called Nautilus Actions. You guys might have heard of that already. Nautilus is a file manager. There is a bunch out there. There's Kaja and Nemo and, uh, and a bunch of others too. So beforehand or before in the past, you could download Nautilus Actions, which was a package, and you could actually get a nice GUI and you can go ahead and create your links. And it'll essentially, it actually looked similar to this, right? It was a couple more menu options and such, but you filled it in and then you could have your new application or new shortcut added to this link. So uh, wherever you are, you could do a quick right click and launch the application. Now, obviously in the world of operating systems, you can launch applications a million different ways, and, you know, including just clicking on an icon at the top, but uh, you know, it's just another nice added feature to be able to do. So. If you do search for adding in context menus with 1804, I mean, it's going to be a little bit difficult as of the recording of this video. There are some links out there. There's even um, a Ask Ubuntu post form page that I'm going to actually uh, reference in just a little bit, which I found to be the most helpful. And in fact, I'm going to reference it just to kind of show you where I'm getting the, the uh, package file, the Debian package file from. And then we'll just go right into creating a new uh, link for our right-click menu, our context menu, and that should pretty much cover the video. So I hope you guys find this useful, and again, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and I'll be uh, happy to help as best as I can. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's just take a quick look at the system information here. Uh, before we get started, you can see it's, it is Linux Mint 19, 3.8.8 is the current version. I'm running this in a virtual uh, environment, uh, so it should be good to show you the change here. Go ahead and close this out. Let's go ahead and pull up that you uh, ask you to form uh, post I was referencing before. Let me just copy that over here. All right, you can see that they talk about, uh, the user talks about trying to use the Nautilus Actions Config Utility in uh, 1804, which is, of course, the operating system that uh, Linux Mint is derived from, right, from the Ubuntu release. And it talks about the fact that it's not available and you can use a replacement, which is called File Manager Configuration Tool. We're gonna use that uh, in this video, and I think it's a better name, right, because it implies you can use it on multiple file managers. Uh, if you need to. So if you scroll down, you can see there's folks that have created a PPA for it. You can install it based on your particular, uh, you can pull down the code based on your particular file manager and you can build it from the source as well and compile it if you need to. Think easier way or the easier route for us is to go to is just download the Debian package and install it from there. So you can download the one that's exclusively meant for Nautilus if that's the file manager you're using. In my case, it's Nemo. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the second link here. I'm actually gonna save it to my downloads folder. I think I've already saved it before. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. In fact, I think it should already be there. Yep, okay, there we go. It's just gonna download a second version of it. So I can go ahead and cancel this out and say cancel one download and I'll delete the 
second version. So this is the, the file manager here, and you can just double click and that'll bring up the, um, the details and the installer, give you some details, included files and whatnot. Install the package. It should only take a couple of seconds to do that actually. And you should essentially be done with the install. So let's go ahead and close out of everything. And you can see that right now, if I click on the start menu and I type in FMA, which is the name of the actual uh, executable uh, or the, the script, it doesn't load anything. If I type in files, it just shows me the file manager and that really doesn't help me very much. Now, I can right click and I can open up a terminal and type in FMA and hit tab and it'll bring up the utility. But instead of doing that, let's go ahead and um, just log on and log back in. Now, you can kill the desktop environment, you can kill the file manager and load it back up. For me, I'm just gonna go ahead and just log on and log back in and you'll see why in just a second. Now, this is a virtual machine, so it is gonna resize the window a little bit, but not to worry, we can just size it back up. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and log out here. All right, and I'll, oh, second password. All right, log out and log back in. Should take another second or so to come back to the desktop. I'll go ahead and close out the welcome screen. Let me just resize this for you. Again, shouldn't be too difficult to do there. All right, so now when I click on the start menu and I type in FMA, you can see it finds the file manager that we're looking for. So I'll bring that up here. And here essentially is the utility. It is pretty involved or in depth, so you can make some really fine tuned changes here. You can do the MIME types in your folders and you can run your specific commands that you need to, uh, environments and such. So if you are interested in that and some of your uh, links that you do create may call for it, it's there, which is nice to know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the uh, first icon here, which is to create a new uh, action. By the way, I do wanna mention something. It is referencing an action because again, it's not just a shortcut to an application. I mean, you could perform multiple actions here, which is what it, it's trying to imply. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the text from here and I'm gonna say Firefox. Now I'm gonna create a Firefox shortcut for me. One, because it is the browser I use and two, it's easy to demo in this video because I don't need to put in the full path to an executable. Um, what I mean by that is this, if I right click here and I open up a terminal as an example, and I type in the word Firefox, it's gonna bring up my browser. The reason for that is because it knows that the Firefox is in a folder that it is aware of, right? So it knows where that, that application lives. It can go search for it, pull up the application and load it for the user. So that's why I'm gonna use Firefox for this demonstration. So now that I've entered the text in, uh, I don't need to add in a tooltip, uh, but I do want an icon. So let's go ahead and click on browse. And when I click on browse, you have two options. You can choose one by the path itself, which will be helpful because you might have a custom icon you wish to call upon, or you can click on your themed icon. So I'm gonna click on the application section here, and I'm gonna find my Firefox uh, icon. Now, keep in mind that if I click okay, it's actually not gonna do anything. It won't show the icon as being selected. What you need to do is find that icon again and click apply, which will then load it into uh, memory, if you will, and then click okay, and now you can see the icon is available for use. So once you've done that, the next thing you really need to do is just enter in a command, right? What are you gonna call? Where is this exact file that, or program or document that you wanna call? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Firefox, or rather type it in, because that is the path. Again, I don't need to put in the full path. And as you can see, the, the tooltip that popped up, it actually says that this is the path to the command. If it's not an absolute path, it has to be a variable. It's essentially letting you know that if the operating system or the desktop environment knows where this application lives, you can just put in the name. If it doesn't, you need to put in the full path, you know, the documents folder or whatever subfolder you have to where it lives so it can call that, which makes sense. So now that I've done that, that's essentially uh, all you need to do to create the shortcut, but there is some other changes I wanna recommend. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save here first, and that saves it in the system. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the options or the preferences menu here, and this uh, may be selected for you, these two options right here, the Nautilus menu layout. Essentially what that's saying is that when you right click, instead of seeing the uh, shortcut directly here, it'll create a, a parent folder like you see desktop. You know, it'll call it file manager dash uh, actions. And within that will be the links that you create or the shortcuts that you create. I don't want that. In fact, I just want it to be directly uh, available to me right from the shortcut menu or the context menu. So I'll make sure that these two are unchecked. 
or the top one is unchecked so it doesn't allow that for me and then you can choose the ordering that you would like to do uh, if that is important to you that's all we really need to, need to touch on for now so let's go ahead and click OK and what I'm going to do is right now it's actually not available here for me uh, but I do want to come into action and I want to do a display item I'm going to check this box display item in location context menu and when I hit save and hopefully when you right click you should now see the Firefox link that I've just created and of course if I click on it it'll bring up the browser and I'm good to go so that essentially covers creating the shortcut and there are some other quick things that you can do if you'd like to and you can play around with the configuration utility which I recommend uh, things like even displaying it in the toolbar so for instance if I click this uh, and I can use the same label and I'll hit save uh, when I bring up one of the, the, uh, the, the windows here and I click on file you'll see that Firefox is listed for me so uh, again as I said there's a bunch of different options here to choose from and, and play around with if, uh, if they kind of help you in the you know day-to-day -day, uh, operation of your uh, your OS so hopefully uh, the video was informative for you guys and you guys found it helpful uh, again if there's any comments uh, or questions let me know and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next video thanks